Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software. It's intended for anyone making interactive projects. Arduino senses the environment by receiving inputs from many sensors and affects its surroundings by controlling lights, motors, and other actuators. You can tell the Arduino what to do by writing code in the Arduino programming language and using the Arduino development environment. We're going to look at some of the basic parts associated with Arduino. Most importantly, we'll look at the Arduino Uno, which is a popular microcontroller board. The Arduino Uno has several different parts. The power connector is how you power your Arduino when it's not plugged into a USB port for power, and it can accept voltages between 7 and 12 volts. At the heart of the Arduino Uno is the AT Mega microcontroller. The USB port is used for powering your Arduino Uno, uploading sketches to your Arduino, and for communicating with your Arduino sketch. The reset button resets the AT Mega microcontroller. The TX and RX LEDs are LEDs that indicate communication between your Arduino and your computer. They usually flicker rapidly during sketch upload as well as during serial communication. They can be useful for debugging. And on the side you see digital pins and you use these pins with digital read, digital write, and analog write. Analog write only works with pins with the PWM symbol. The pin 13 LED is the only actuator built into the Arduino Uno. This LED is very useful for debugging. On the bottom left you see the analog in pins and you use these pins with analog read. And finally, the ground and 5 volt pins provide 5 volts of power and ground to your circuits. The Arduino Uno has no way for you to interact with it by itself out of the box. A USB cable allows you to connect your Arduino Uno to your computer for programming. It also provides power to the Arduino for projects. You can build circuits and interfaces for interaction and tell the microcontroller how to interface with other components. The breadboard is the primary place you build circuits. And this one here is solderless named because you don't have to solder anything together, sort of like Lego in electronic form. The horizontal and vertical rows of the breadboard carry electricity through thin metal connectors under the plastic with holes. The five holes in each horizontal row are connected electrically through metal strips inside the breadboard. The vertical strips that run the length of the breadboard are electrically connected. These strips are usually used for power and ground connections. The middle row breaks the connection between the two sides of the board. Sensors listen to the physical world. They convert energy that you give off when you press buttons, or wave your arms, or shout, into electrical signals. Buttons and knobs are sensors that you touch with your fingers, but there are many other kinds of sensors. Actuators take action in the physical world. They convert electrical energy back into physical energy, like light and heat and movement. A battery snap is used to connect a 9-volt battery to power leads that can be easily plugged into a breadboard or your Arduino. Next we have capacitors, and these components store and release electrical energy in a circuit. When the circuit's voltage is higher than what is stored in the capacitor, it allows current to flow in, giving the capacitor a charge. When the circuit's voltage is lower, the stored charge is released. These are often placed across power and ground close to a sensor or motor to help smooth fluctuations in voltage. A DC motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy when electricity is applied to its leads. Coils of wire inside the motor become magnetized when current flows through them. These magnetic fields attract and repel magnets, causing the shaft to spin. If the direction of the electricity is reversed, the motor will spin in the opposite direction. A diode ensures electricity only flows in one direction. This is useful when you have a motor or other high current slash voltage load in your circuit. Diodes are polarized, meaning that the direction that they're placed in a circuit matters. Placed one way, they allow current to pass through. Place the other way, they block it. The anode side generally connects to the point of higher energy in your circuit. The cathode typically connects to the point of lower energy or to ground. The cathode is usually marked with a band on one side of the component's body. The H-bridge is a circuit that allows you to control the polarity of the voltage applied to a load, usually a motor. The H-bridge here is an integrated circuit, but it could also be constructed with a number of discrete components. Jumper wires are used to connect components to each other on the breadboard and to the Arduino. Light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, are a type of diode that illuminates when electricity passes through it. Like all diodes, electricity only flows in one direction through these components. The anode, which typically connects to power, is usually the longer leg, and the cathode is the shorter leg. A liquid crystal display, or LCD, is a type of alphanumeric or graphic display based on liquid crystals. LCDs are available in many sizes, shapes, and styles. This one has two rows with 16 characters each. Male header pins are pins that fit into female sockets, like those on a breadboard. They help make connecting things much easier. An optocoupler allows you to connect two circuits that do not share a common power supply. Internally, there is a small LED that, when illuminated, causes a photoreceptor inside to close an internal switch. When you apply voltage to the positive pin, the LED lights and the internal switch closes. The two outputs replace a switch in the second circuit. The piezo is an electrical component that can be used to detect vibrations and create noises. 
A photoresistor, also known as a photocell or light-dependent resistor, is a variable resistor that changes its resistance based on the amount of light that falls on its face. A potentiometer is a variable resistor with three pins. Two of the pins are connected to the ends of a fixed resistor. The middle pin, or wiper, moves across the resistor, dividing it into two halves. When the external sides of the potentiometer are connected to voltage and ground, the middle leg will give the difference in voltage as you turn the knob. Push buttons are momentary switches that close the circuit when pressed. They snap into breadboards easily, and they're good for detecting on and off signals. Resistors resist the flow of electrical energy in a circuit, changing the voltage and current as a result. Resistor values are measured in ohms, which is represented by the Greek omega character. The colored stripes on the sides of resistors indicate their value. A servo motor is a type of geared motor that can only rotate 180 degrees. It is controlled by sending electrical pulses from your Arduino. These pulses tell the motor what position it should move to. A temperature sensor changes its voltage output depending on the temperature of the component. The outside legs connect to power and ground, and the voltage in the center pin changes as it gets warmer or cooler. A tilt sensor is a type of switch that will open or close depending on its orientation. Typically, they are hollow cylinders with a metal ball inside that will make a connection across two leads when tilted in the proper direction. A transistor is a three-legged device that can operate as an electronic switch. It's useful for controlling high current slash high voltage components like motors. One pin connects to the ground, another to the component being controlled, and the third connects to the Arduino. When the component receives voltage on the pin connected to the Arduino, it closes the circuit between the ground and the other component. You can control these components with the Arduino IDE, which allows you to write programs and upload them to your Arduino. In future videos, I'll show you examples of how you can use your Arduino, but until then, thanks for watching.